the continuation of the previous lecture here i have to give uh, the formula for the energy at the power of a discrete m signals so energy of a discrete m signal a is sigma n equal to minus infinity to plus infinity this is magnitude of x of n whole square and the power is sigma n equal to minus n by 2 to plus n by 2 1 by n plus 1 magnitude of x of n whole square for periodic signals with period capital N or p equal to limit n tends to infinity 1 by n plus 1 sigma n equal to minus n by 2 to plus n by 2 x of n whole square for power signals not periodic signals for power signals so for power these two formulae are correct okay so this is for periodic signals so where n is the period of the signal so n equal to minus n by 2 to plus n by 2 we have capital n plus 1 values right here so p equal to 1 by n plus 1 sigma n equal to minus n by 2 to plus n by 2 magnitude x of n whole square so here why n plus 1 why this n plus 1 capital n plus 1 because number of samples between n equal to minus n by 2 to plus n by 2 are n plus 1 so this one is because so this one is because the sample at n equal to 0 okay so total number of samples between minus n by 2 to plus n by 2 are n plus 1 and for power uh, for power signals that is limit n tends to infinity 1 by n plus 1 sigma n equal to minus n by 2 to plus n by 2 and here also capital n plus 1 values are there between n equal to minus n by 2 to plus n by 2 n equal to 0 is this 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 one is because of that n equal to 0 okay total number of samples if we take a small n equal to minus n to plus n suppose so this is this is minus n this is plus n then here we have to take 2n plus 1 total number of samples between minus n to plus n minus 1 to minus n we have n values plus 1 to plus n we have n values total 2n and at exactly uh, small n equal to 0 we have one more sample so total samples are 2n plus 1 if n equal to minus n to plus n okay let's see the difference okay uh, i want to give one example for discrete time signal so that is so let us say x of n equal to del of n whether it is energy signal or power signal or neither energy nor power signal in continuous time case we already derived x of t equal to del of t is neither energy nor power signal we already proved in the previous lecture so now i am taking x of n equal to del of n so what is del of n first del of n is this is one okay we define del of n as del of n equal to one at n equal to zero and zero otherwise so first i will find out its energy if it is energy signal it will become finite okay. energy equal to sigma n equal to minus infinity plus infinity magnitude of x of n whole square that equal to only at n equal to zero only exist 
uh, for all other values it is zero so only 10 equal to zero so that is one all square this one so this is finite we got energy finite so this is energy signal so see you know, for del of t at t equal to zero at t equal to zero del of t is infinity okay not uh, finite value but here for del of n at n equal to zero we have one okay this is one so it is finite well that's why we are getting del of n as energy signal okay this is the only difference and i'm going to the next classification of the signals in fact this is the this one is a lost classification that is the real and complex valid okay real and complex valid signals If it is real, we have two more classifications. If it is complex, we have two more classifications. If it is real, we have even, symmetry, and odd symmetry. If it is complex, we have even conjugate symmetry. If it is complex, we have odd conjugate symmetry. Okay. So these are the classifications. So this is only for real. This is only for complex this classification. Yes. So first I want to define what is real signal, what is complex valid signal. Yeah. First real signal. If x of t equal to x conjugate of t. If you conjugate it, you will get the same x of t only. Then it is a real signal. Okay. And what is purely imaginary signal? If x of t equal to minus x conjugate of t then x of t is purely imaginary i will give examples then you can understand okay then what is complex value what is complex value signal a signal x of t has both real part and imaginary part okay that that signal is called complex valid signal okay. i will give examples so that you can understand easily first real valued signal okay for real valid signal there is no imaginary part okay suppose x of t equal to some t uh, 
r x of t equal to sum t power t into a of t Third, you don't have any j terms in between okay so suppose some j into some whatever some 2t or some j into u of t say like this these are complex valid signal they have imaginary part okay, imaginary part so these are not complex valid signal i'm assuming these are real valid signal so they don't have any real part okay they don't have any uh, imaginary part so what is x conjugate of t x conjugate of t is wherever you have j you have to put minus j here we don't have any j in uh, x of t so x conjugate of t equal to same t only don't have j term so that is x of t only uh, in the second case in second case also x conjugate of t equal to same e power t into u of t you don't have any j terms so it is x of t only so this is the condition if x of t equal to x conjugate of t then x of t is real okay next if x of t is purely imaginary purely imaginary means there is no real part purely imaginary this suppose i will take x of t equal to some j into t okay you don't have real part you only have imaginary part only uh, j terms so what if i do x conjugate of t wherever j term is there there you replace j with minus j so minus j to t so how can i write this minus of x of t so that implies x of t equal to minus x conjugate of t then x of t is purely imaginary okay yeah. and any complex valid signal suppose x of t is complex valued signal so that is suppose x of t equal to some a plus j b okay a is a real part b is a imaginary part okay so it has both real part and imaginary part real part is a and imaginary part is b this is a complex signal okay so this a and b are functions of t whatever so energy start so x of t is real then we have two classifications even and odd okay so if x of t is real we have even part and it's odd part okay if x of t is complex It 
as even conjugate part and odd conjugate part okay so i will derive the formula for even part and odd part and even conjugate part and odd conjugate part so first even signal i need to define even signal if x of t equal to x of minus t then x of t is called even signal r signal if x of t equal to minus x of minus t then it is called r So, if I have give I have been given a signal x of t, so how do I find out its even part and odd part? Given x of t, how to find out its even part and its odd part? Okay. So any given signal x of t can be written as sum of its even part and its odd part okay because its even part and odd part are always orthogonal to each other okay so if you multiply x e of t and x naught of t dt integral minus infinity plus infinity dt you will get zero always because even part and odd part are always orthogonal signals then you can write them some of these are the uh, orthogonal signals x e of t plus x zero of t so here we already know that x e of t is a even part of the signal so it, it is itself a even signal then x o of t is odd signal uh, odd part of the signal and it is itself odd, odd signal so x of minus t equal to x c of minus t x a of x o of minus t just substitute t with minus t what is x c of minus t this is even signal even part of the signal is even signal so that is why x c of minus t equal x c of t and x o of minus t is minus x o of t because x of minus t x of t is a odd signal so that is x e of t minus x of t x of minus t to say this is 1 this is 2 so what i will do is 1 plus 2 add 1 plus 2 then x of t plus x of minus t equal to 2 times of x c of t that implies x c of t equal to x of t plus x of minus t by 2 similarly 1 minus 2 it is x of t minus x of minus t equal to 2 times of x o of t that is the odd part of the signal is x of t minus x of minus t by 2 therefore i will summarize x even part of the signal is x of t plus x of minus t by 2 x odd part of the signal is x of t minus x of minus t by 2 if x of t is a real signal if it is x of t is a real signal it has its even part and its odd part okay next case if x of t is complex valued signal we have two parts one is even 
कॉन्जुगेट सिमेट्री ऑड कॉन्जुगेट सिमेट्री ओके सो फर्स्ट व्हाट इज इवन कॉन्जुगेट सिमेट्री इफ सम सिग्नल एक्स ऑफ टी फॉलोस और गुड से तो सम सिग्नल एक्स ऑफ टी ओबेस इवन कॉन्जुगेट सिमेट्री व्हाट इज द कंडीशन एक्स ऑफ टी इक्वल टू एक्स ऑफ माइनस टी इफ इट इज इवन तो फॉर रियल वैल्यू सिग्नल so it is conjugate just put conjugate on x of minus t that is even conjugate symmetry if x of t equal x of minus t it is even signal if x of t equal x conjugate to minus t it is even conjugate symmetric signal if x of t same obs odd conjugate symmetry X of t is odd conjugate symmetry. Same x of t equal to minus x of minus t for odd signal. If it is if x of t is real signal, so x of t equal minus x of minus t if it is odd signal, unreal signal. What if it is complex valid signal, an odd conjugate symmetric signal? Just you have to put a conjugate here. x of t equal to minus x conjugate minus t. Okay, so these are the conditions to obey even conjugate symmetry and to obey odd conjugate symmetry. Okay. Next, suppose if I have x of t, then I can write this as sum of even conjugate part and its odd conjugate part. Because these two are orthogonal signals, same, uh, same like before case. So, x. First, I will uh, what do I do? First, I will conjugate it. X conjugate of t equal to x e c conjugate of t plus x o c conjugate of t. And x conjugate of minus t, x e c conjugate of minus t, plus x o c conjugate of minus t. So this even conjugate part is itself a even conjugate symmetric signal. So then you will get x e c of t, and this is x o c of E C means even conjugate, O C means odd conjugate. From the properties I discussed before, this is x conjugate of minus t. Say so this is one, this is two. Add one and two. One and two. That implies x of t plus x conjugate of minus t. Then you will get two times of x e c of t. From this, x e c of t equal to x of t plus x conjugate of minus t by two, and one minus two, one minus two. From this, x o c of t, just minus two, one minus two. X o c of t equal to x of t. Minus x conjugate of minus t by two. Okay. Let me summarize. So, if x of t is real, if x of t is complex. x of t is real it has its even part and its odd part what is its even part or uh, still write basic if 
x of t is real then i could write x of t as its even part x e of t plus its odd part from this i got its even part From this I got its even part equal to x of t plus x of minus t by 2 and its odd part is x of t minus x of minus t by 2 and if x of t is complex I can write its x of t as its even conjugate part plus its odd conjugate part. So what is its even conjugate part x of t plus x of minus t just put a conjugate right x o c of t equal to x of t minus x conjugate of minus t by 2 just put a conjugate so here to here the difference is so here to here these two cases the difference is only conjugate only conjugate for x of minus t that's it okay next suppose if x of t is complex valued signal So, if I say complex valued signal, it has its real part and its imaginary part. So, how to write its real part? Uh, how to write the signal as its real part x r of t plus j into its imaginary part x i of t. Okay. So, what I do is I will say this equation is one. What I do is I will try first x conjugate of t. What is x conjugate of t? Wherever j replace j with minus j. x r of t minus j x i of t. This is 2 I will say. Add 1 and 2. From this 2 times of x r of t equal to x of t plus x conjugate of t. From this x r of t equal to x of t plus x conjugate of t by 2 this is a real part of the signal 1 plus 2 1 plus next 1 minus 2 that implies 1 minus 2 what do you get from 1 minus 2 x imaginary part is here we have 1 minus 2 2 j times of x i of t here we get so that is x of t minus x conjugate of t by 2 j okay this is important this is the imaginary part of x of t okay so here we have discussed three types okay one is even part an odd part another one is even conjugate part odd conjugate part and another one is real part and imaginary part and in between we have discussed the condition for even symmetry and odd symmetry for real valid signals and the condition for even conjugate symmetry and odd conjugate symmetry for complex valid signals and the condition for real and purely imaginary for any signal So I will put all these things in one table so that uh, they will look simpler. Okay. So x real part of t any x of t we have given x real part of t equal to 
x of t plus x conjugate of t by 2 x imaginary part of t equal to x of t minus x conjugate of t by 2 this is 1 and if x of t is real we have even part x e of t equal to x of t plus x of minus t by 2 and our part is x of t minus x of minus t by 2 is 1 one part and if x of t is complex valid signal it's even conjugate part equal to x of t plus x conjugate of minus t by 2 remember this is here it is a minus x odd conjugate part of t equal to x of t minus x conjugate of minus t by 2 here x imaginary part of t here it is 2j not 2 remember okay this is one more uh, another part okay and we have checked some conditions so i want to write those conditions also suppose if x of t if x of t obeys even symmetry first one if x of t obeys even symmetry then x of t equal to x of minus t if x of t obeys odd symmetry x of t equal to minus x of minus t and third one if x of t obeys even conjugate symmetry then x of t equal to x conjugate of minus t just put a conjugate that's it if x of t obeys odd conjugate symmetry then x of t equal to minus x conjugate of minus t if f x of t obeys odd conjugate symmetry okay so this slide is very important whatever uh, i have written in this slide are very important while we are discussing the fourier series properties uh, for a transform properties wherever uh, mm, i want to discuss the properties i will discuss every time these uh, um, these concepts okay and from these things i have to discuss some inferences What are the inferences? The uh, first inference is if x of t obeys even conjugate symmetry, what is its real part and what is its imaginary part? What symmetries? this real part and its imaginary parts obeys so i will derive that is very important so the question is x of t obeys even conjugate symmetry what is the condition x of t equal to x conjugate of minus t this is the condition so it's a real part and its imaginary part so he is asking about its real part and its imaginary part that is the given symmetry signal is complex valid signal so i will write any complex valid signal as its real part plus j into its imaginary part okay this i can write but i have a condition this is x of t equal to x conjugate of minus t so what i do first i will conjugate it x conjugate of t so wherever j is there replace that j by minus j that is x conjugate of t 
and replace t by minus t x conjugate of minus t that is x r of minus t minus j into x i of minus t okay next so from 1 this is 1 what is x of t equal to x conjugate of minus t that is this is x of t this is x conjugate of minus t both are equal so if both are equal their real parts are equal uh, they, they, their corresponding real parts, are, real parts are equal and their corresponding imaginary parts are equal what is the corresponding real parts from these two from these two so real parts are xr of t that equal to xr of minus t and what are the imaginary parts x i of t that equal to minus x i of minus t what i'm doing here this x of t equal to x i con x conjugate of minus t so this is x of t this is x conjugate of minus t i just equated these two so if i equate these two i have to equate their real parts and their imaginary parts this has real part as x r of t this has real part as x r of minus t so that's why i equated them and this has imaginary part as x i of t this has imaginary part as x i of minus t minus x i of minus t so i equated these two so from these two so from this one x r of t equal to x r of minus t that is the real part of the signal is even the real part is even and from this x i of t equal to x minus x i of minus t that is imaginary part is odd very important okay so if x of t obeys that is if x of t obeys even conjugate symmetry its real part x r of t obeys even symmetry its odd part of the signal x i of t obeys odd symmetry okay that is the first inference i can draw and one more if second inference x of t obeys odd symmetry uh, uh, not odd symmetry odd conjugate symmetry put it here odd conjugate symmetry okay so what is the condition and uh, what is the question if x of t obeys odd conjugate symmetry what is its real part what is its image what is its imaginary part so what is the condition for the x of t to obey odd conjugate symmetry so that x of t equal to minus x conjugate of minus t okay so this will take as one and x of t can be written as its real part plus j times its imaginary part and i have a condition x of t equal to minus x conjugate of minus t so first I will do x conjugate of t that is x r of t minus j x i of t wherever j is there replace the j by minus j and x i conjugate of minus t wherever t is there replace t by minus t and minus x conjugate of minus t just multiply with minus minus xr of minus t plus j into xif minus t so from these two so equation one is x of t equal to minus x conjugate of minus t so these two are equal this is x of t this is x minus x conjugate of minus t these two are equal so if i want to equal these two signals i have to equate their real parts that is real part is xr of t this 
This is real part x directly. This real part is minus x r of minus t. And its imaginary part is x i of t. And its imaginary part is x i of minus t. So from this to its real part is r. And its imaginary part is from this even. So if x of t obeys odd conjugate symmetry, its real part is odd and its imaginary part is even. Okay. So these two inferences are very important. And I discuss your for eight series or for eight times whatever. XR of t equal to so from this okay. Put another petition. 